This episode is sponsored by ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com forward slash forge and make ship happen. So in this episode, we're working on the features of the underside of our active jaw. We need to mill a flat spot across the top and then mill these teeth. They sit at about 85 degrees. And so thank goodness it's in the dividing head because we can make that adjustment. I almost made a big goof. Right, so I was setting this up. I've got this lined up. I'm ready to cut it. And I'm like, wait, is the angle actually correct? It's the opposite. I lifted it up five degrees. It should have gone down five degrees. So that could have been awful. The problem I'm encountering is this nut right there. It's stopping the chuck from tilting down far enough. So close! Grr. Five degrees. Phew. Doesn't look right, Jamie. Tell me that doesn't look right. I'm gonna call it more like six degrees. Got it to six degrees. Let's do it. Now we move it six millimeters. So I'm pretty certain that this jaw is completely done in the milling machine. I'm not gonna take it out until I'm more certain. You will note that the pitch of threads is different. Now that's because this is two and a half millimeter pitch, I guess, or five millimeter pitch. This is three or six millimeter pitch because I only have a three millimeter end mill. So I'm working with what I've got and there is a slight modification. So our original screw doesn't fit in it. And of course, we're wanting to make our own screw. So that's no big deal. It's no big deal until we've actually got to think about how we make our own screw. A three millimeter pitch is massive. Now my lathe can make a three millimeter pitch, but it's also a very interesting type of thread because it's like a Acme thread. It's flat bottomed and flat topped. I know for certain I don't have a tool that's specifically designed for cutting a thread like this. And short of using a parting tool to cut the threads, you know, I was just about to poo poo this whole parting tool idea. There is an idea that we could use a parting tool. But what was initially in my head as the way of making this was not using a lathe cutting tool, but in fact, using an end mill. So finding a way to get this end mill cutting in this lathe like this and using the lead screw of the lathe to match it up to this three millimeter pitch. Somewhere amongst the chaos, I have this right here. This is die grinder. You see me use it all the time. 25,000 ripens. It currently holds a six millimeter die grinding bit, we need to hold a three millimeter shank tool. Either I have a collet that's three millimeter, it's possible, or we need to find a way to make it. And if we can make it, we'd be able to rig this up, whoblamo, lock it on, and mill ourselves the thread. You know what we're not gonna be doing, Jamie? Is making a replica collet. That's actually quite a complex bit of machining. What about if we make, ah, there's a wasp! But what we might be able to do is make a collet inside of a collet. I think it's gonna work. I have really and truly done some sketchy things in the lathe, but I think this tops it. Look at this. We have a bloody airline near a spinning chuck and bungee cords. Look, this is how I turn on my bloody die grinder. That's just disaster. Disaster waiting to happen. Why am I the way that I am? Let's see what happens. Made big, big goof, much a mistake -o. Now you heard me talk about it earlier. I checked to make sure there was a three millimeter pitch option here on the lathe. Now why did I think three millimeter pitch was what we needed? Well, it's because I had a three millimeter gap from one edge of our tooth to the other edge of our tooth. But guess what? That's not pitch. On a conventional screw that's made up of pointy triangles, your pitch would be this distance to this distance. And if that was three millimeters, you'd be good to go. I. I'm working on this very funky little profile here. My pitch is not this distance to that distance. Rather, it is this distance to that distance. Big distance, small distance. Now you know what step over I had over here when I was making these teeth? I had a six millimeter step over, which made total sense over there. But here in the lathe, I for some bloody reason thought that I was after a three millimeter pitch is wrong. This is meant to be a six millimeter pitch. We should have big open flat spots and we don't. I set the lathe up wrong. I have taken cuts. 
that are wrong. And so I've got to start it all again. You know what? I'm throwing the calipers on there just in case. And inside the little groove that we've already cut, it's still the right diameter. Fingers crossed we might not need a complete restart. That didn't look like it was going to be the right pitch. What is going on? What? I've got to change the gears? Right, so up here it's saying G is what I need for a six mil pitch. So it turns out I'm pretty sure there's different gear arrangements for achieving different things. How do I make G? G, 48, 88, 95, 44. Oh look, they're stamped. Yeah. So if that 88 tooth comes off, hang on, is it as simple as this? And then 45. Yes! This was here and now it's there. Perfect. I think we've only gone and done it. B, S, W, 6. B, S, 6, W. Perfect. Turn on the lead again. Tell you what, that lead screw is flying. There we go! That's it! Oh no! Ah, I'm pretty sure that something really bad just happened. Either we broke the tool, there wasn't enough air, or I cut on the wrong path again. Ah, yeah, that's not good! Yeah, that's nasty. All right, so I've slept on it. It was not super comfortable and it was a little bit oily, so I had to have a shower this morning. But the tidiest way to get this done is going to be using the lead screw of the lathe. This die grinder is potentially a little bit of a weak link in this setup, though. Come over here, Mr. Pupple. Unlike the Bridgeport mill that has a huge amount of rigidity in the spindle, it's a die grinder. It doesn't have massive spindle rigidity. Right now, we've been trying to go straight in. But what if we go from the top and use the side of the end mill to cut it? Is the rigidity there anyway? Right, I am feeling pretty happy about this idea. It hasn't snapped. We've been able to make a really deep groove, but there is one potential problem with this plan, which is what I believe is called the lead angle on the thread. It's super clear when you look at a drill bit, there's a really big angle on the groove that makes the spiral, just like a thread. And just like we angled the grooves here, about five or six degrees, we need to do the same with our cutter. Otherwise, we're gonna create a groove that's way too wide. It's a reverse thread! It's meant to be a reverse thread! So let's set it to cut threads. It, God, it won't engage. Anyway, if we set it here, it'll cut threads in the opposite direction. I don't know if I like it. But hey, that's not that bad. I was concerned there was gonna be a lot more backlash because this tooth profile is not correct. It's way pointier than it should be. I've really made myself a proper pickle. The groove that I'm making is much more than the three millimeter end mill. And I can't for the life of me work out why that's happening. Is it maybe like a backlash issue with the lead screw because we're cutting from both directions? Oh, it could be. So the half nut that is connected to the lead screw, invariably it's threaded and threads are never perfect. There's always some sort of a gap. And so they push from one direction and then there's what you call backlash, which is the slack that has to be taken up for it to push the other way. And the way this is all set up, I'm adjusting the depth of cut with my tool holder here. So I don't have like a micrometer dial on it. And as a result, I can't easily turn up and down. So I've just been running the same depth of cut the whole way through. And maybe the backlash in the half nut and the lead screw means that this is wider. I'm brainstorming now. Have you ever been brainstorming? Okay. I also can't use the table to go in and out this way because the angles are different. So it would mess it up. But, 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 but what if this the compound was used. Okay, so if I move this like that. 95.3. So basically, I'm trying to make sure this dial is gonna work for me. I really hope I'm not about to break anything. Very possible I just broke it, Jamie. Let me tell you what, this is going to be the setup. It's how we're gonna do it. We 
have to manipulate our in and out with this dial right here on the compound. And the trouble is, is that our numbers don't stay stuck. I've moved these things around. I've tightened them in different directions. I've done everything I can do to get this dial to lock to the actual lead screw, but it just won't. It moves, and so I've got to feel my way in, and I've been jamming the cutter, just making a right mess. Without knowing precise measurements, I can't do this accurately. This is what I mean. The lead screw turns, but I can hold this. That shouldn't work. Sometimes it turns with it, sometimes it gets stuck. So even fixing the issue of not having measurements while we cut, I've broke two more end mills. This one is chipped as all get on the tip. I can't think of any way that I can set this up to make up for all the funkiness that's going on. So I think at this point, I might take a couple of the ones with a thread profile that we didn't like, just cut them to length, they've got a hole in them, and see if despite the bad thread profile, maybe we get lucky and there's the engagement we need. It's been one hell of an ordeal, not just to make a screw, but also to get it fitted up. And despite the incorrect thread profile on the screw, it actually works. It opens, it closes, and there's really quite minimal backlash. It was hours of fitting up to get that done. I'm very happy it is. We still have some critical components and work to be done on it, and I'll see you on the next episode as we tackle that. This episode has been sponsored by ShipStation. It is the web-based e-commerce shipping platform that we use every single day at the Montana shop to turn shipping into an effortless operation. Now, ShipStation is not magic, but it will take all of the stress of shipping your business's orders away so that you can focus on what's most important, which is actually growing your business. The way it works is no matter your e-commerce selling platform, whether it's Squarespace, Amazon, eBay, and a plethora of others, your orders will be automatically synced in to your ShipStation dashboard where you can use their powerful automations to turn shipping into a one-click operation. When you're ShipStation member, you get access to deeply discounted shipping rates like the Fortune 500 companies do, no matter the size of your business, and even set up your own USPS collection so you've never got to go to the post office again. It is essential to us and the team in Montana for fulfilling your orders. And if you want to scale your business and get rid of all the stress and hassle of shipping, go to shipstation.com forward slash forge. You're going to get a 60 day free trial where you can see just how awesome it is. So check them out and make ship happen. Thank you very much. Bye bye.